Is investing in faster DDR5 memory truly worthwhile at this moment? Several processors now support DDR5, and with Intel already boasting two generations and a third one around the horizon, the adoption is clear. At its inception, DDR5 cost was noticeably high, and its performance, especially with 4800 mega transfer kits, didn't distinctly surpass high-end DDR4. However, as the market has evolved and the price has significantly decreased, it prompts the question, is it beneficial to upgrade to the fastest memory? First, let's talk a bit about DDR5. It is the latest generation of memory for PCs and was first released in 2021. However, it is still in pretty early stages of adoption. DDR5 offers a number of improvements of DDR4, including faster speeds. This is due to a number of factors, including higher clock speed and wider data bus. It can also support higher capacities. This is important for those who need a lot of memory for tasks such as video editing and gaming. As I mentioned, DDR5 memory was initially quite expensive when it first came out. However, prices are falling drastically due to increased competition and the maturing of the market. But don't be fooled, they are expected to start going back up. So does it make sense to get DDR5 memory right now? The answer depends on your needs and budget. If you're building a new computer system, DDR5 is the way to go. It offers the best performance and features available. However, if you're happy with your current system, there is no need to upgrade to DDR5 just yet. DDR4 memory is still a great choice for most users. For those buying DDR5, let's see how much its speed actually matters. For our testing, we used Intel 12900K CPU and NVIDIA 3080 GPU. All components were kept the same and only RAM was changed between these three kits. We tested Gale 4800 mega transfer kit and two Kingston Fury. One rated at 6800 mega transfers and one rated at 7200 mega transfers. We primarily tested synthetic benchmarks and selection of games to get a broad perspective on performance. To make it a bit easier for me and probably you, I'll refer to the RAM speeds in just numbers without repeating the mega transfers bit. In OCCT Benchmark, the Kingston Fury Renegade 7200 outperformed in read, write and combined tests, solidifying its lead in data transfer speeds. The 6800 variant was not that far behind, and both significantly outperformed the Gale 4800. In Firestrike, all round variants were neck and neck in the graphics score, however in physics and combined scores, the 6800 variant took a slight edge. And this is where having the fastest possible RAM may not have the most consistent results. We actually did these tests multiple times and found the results shift significantly. In Time Spy Extreme, it was once again very close competition, with the 6800 variant slightly ahead in the CPU test. Graphics scores were almost indistinguishable among the three. In Cinebench R23, for single core performance, the 7200 kit was marginally ahead, while for multi core, the 6800 kit took the lead. If we shift our focus on gaming and analyze the results starting with Starfield at 1080p, we see that the Kingston Fury Renegade 7200 delivers smoother frame rates, ensuring that the space battles or planet explorations remain fluid. However, the difference between it and 6800 is so minor that it might be imperceptible during the regular gameplay. For competitive games, this could mean the difference between spotting an enemy first or reacting to an in-game event just a tad quicker. At 1440p resolution, the gaming experience becomes more GPU bound, yet the 7200 RAM slightly edges out ahead, especially when exploring detailed planetary surfaces or busting spaceports. That minor RAM speed advantage can offer slightly more consistent frame rates. In Shadow of a Tomb Raider, the story remains similar. At 1080p, the FPS differences are marginal at the top. We see about 5% improvement in average FPS going up from 4800 RAM and 10% improvement on 1% lows. Up in the resolution to 1440p, the difference between RAM kits become more nuanced. The 7200 variant marginally outperforms in average FPS, but the difference is really irrelevant. What is important is that 1% low performance, and we still see 5% improvement from the 4800 speed. Just for fun, I also tested World War Z with ultra-wide resolution, which really pushes that GPU, and found that both 4800 and 6800 RAM performed the same, but we got a bit more juice out of the 7200, which took a 4% lead in average FPS and a 10% lead in 1% lows. Overall, while synthetic benchmarks provide a clear picture of RAM performance, the real-world gaming results paint a more nuanced story. The benefits of faster DDR5 memory are evident, but the tangible impacts often depend on the specific game and resolution. So to revisit our core question, does DDR5 memory truly matter? It is a balance of needs and nuances. In data heavy tasks, the Kingston Fury Renegade 7200 clearly demonstrates its performance, but for many real world applications, especially gaming, the differences are more subtle. Consider this, 
If you're a content creator frequently rendering large video files, the extra speed could cut down your render times, giving you precious minutes or even hours. For a competitive gamer, it might mean smoother gameplay, potentially giving an edge in the tight situations. But if you're on a budget and need a machine for general tasks, then Gale 4800 still offers commendable performance. With DDR5 prices poised to raise, it's game of timing and requirements. What are your needs, watch the market and choose wisely. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.